Now in this video I want to show you a proof of Brouwer's fixed point theorem which is a really nice application of the things we've seen so far about the fundamental group. Um, it's really nice in the sense that the statement has nothing to do with the fundamental group just like with the theorem of fundamental theorem of algebra um, but the proof uses it in a really crucial way or this particular proof does anyway. Um, so what's the theorem? Theorem says, let F be a continuous map from the two-dimensional disk to itself. Remember the disk is the set of points x, y in the plane, such that uh, the distance from the origin is less than or equal to 1, so this is the closed disk. So we've got some continuous map from the closed disk to itself. The claim is there exists a point in the disk such that f of x equals x. And so there's a fixed point. It's a fixed point of the map f. Okay, so we're told the proof of this is supposed to involve the fundamental group somewhere, but the disk itself has trivial fundamental group, so how are we going to manage that? Well, we're going to prove it by contradiction, so assume um, you know, f of x not equal to x for all x in the disk. Then I claim we can define a map G from the disk to its boundary. The boundary, of course, of the disk is a circle. All right, here's the disk. The boundary is just this circle running around the outside. So we're going to define this map. And the only reason we're able to define this map is because there are no fixed points. And we define it as follows. So I'm going to need a bigger diagram. So for each point, let's look at f of that point. And that's not equal to the point we started with. Otherwise, we have a fixed point. And then let's draw an arrow going from f of x back through x and out towards the boundary. Now, that arrow is going to intersect the boundary somewhere. And that's the point that we call g of x. So we start with a point x that maps somewhere that's somewhere else under f and then we draw a line back to x until it hits the boundary and that's g of x. If there was a fixed point we wouldn't know which line to draw, right? You could draw any line. It would pass through x and f of x. So it wouldn't make sense. So here are some claims about this map. First claim, G is continuous, and that will require some checking. Uh, it kind of looks obvious, right? Because intuitively, if you vary X a little bit, then you vary F of X a little bit because F is continuous. So this line doesn't change very much, so nor does its point of intersection with the boundary. And that's more or less how it's proved, but we're going to have to prove this. Second claim, Claim number one. Claim number two, if x is in the boundary, then g of x equals x. And this is actually clear, because if x is in the boundary, 
no matter where f of x is, the line that you draw from f of x back to x hits the boundary at x. So this claim is actually obvious. This first one is requires some checking. So given these two claims, how do we prove Brouwer's fixed point theorem? Um, we proceed as follows. We note, first of all, that the composition of the inclusion map of the boundary together with G is the identity map on the boundary. So uh, let I be the inclusion of the boundary into the disk, then the identity map of the boundary is G composed with the inclusion. All right, if I take a point X that's in the boundary, think of it being in the boundary and apply G, it stays where it is. That follows from claim two. The boundary does have fundamental group because the boundary is the circle. So its fundamental group is the integers. And this statement about functions translates into a statement about groups as long as we take the push forward map so let's say the boundary includes into the disk which projects back to the boundary um, this gives us a map from pi 1 of the boundary to pi 1 of the disk back to pi 1 of the boundary this group is Z, this group is trivial, this group is Z. So the composition, this is the push forward map of course, I star, G star. The composition is trivial because it factors through the trivial group. So G star compose I star um, of some element gamma is zero for all gamma. But we've just said that G compose I is the identity. So G compose I star equals the identity. And we've also seen that the, func the fundamental group is functorial. So G compose I star is G star composed I star. So we're saying for all gamma in the integers, gamma equals zero. And that's a contradiction. Right, so we've translated this fact about maps into an algebraic statement about the fundamental group. And then we're saying this, the identity map on the integers factors through the trivial group, which is not true. Therefore, our assumption this map G exists must be wrong and that the map G exists followed from the fact that there was no fixed point. Therefore there has to be a fixed point and you get Brouwer's fixed point theorem. So coming back what what do we still have to do? We have to check these claims. I've already told you the second claim is clear. The first claim needs to be proven. Well the easiest way I know how to do this proving that G is continuous is just write down g explicitly in coordinates and check that it's continuous. So let's get a new page. Uh, g, uh, you can kind of split it up into two pieces. Um, so it can be written as a composition. H composed G. 
So what are H and J? J is the map that sends the disk to the disk times the disk minus the set of points x comma x where x is in the disk okay so what's going on here this is the what's called the diagonal right so if the disk was actually a square right, if i was doing this for the interval instead of the disk the set of points x comma x would be exactly the diagonal line here so now just imagine this is a disk this is a disk i'm cutting out all the points on the diagonal x comma x okay so what is this map j it's the map that sends x to x comma f of x and that lands in the complement of the diagonal because f of x is not equal to x by assumption for any x so the fact that f of x is not equal to x implies j misses the diagonal so we we can subtract the diagonal from the image and h is the map defined on this funny space d times d2 times d2 minus the diagonal mapping to the boundary which and this this is going to have no reference to f at all this is just a map um, so this map uh, sends a pair of points x and y to the unique point on the boundary where the line through y starting at y and through x meets the boundary okay so the reason this works is because first of all you take x and f of x and then you draw the line through f of x and x to get to the boundary so g of x equals h of x and f of x right, you, you put an f of x here you draw the line backwards and you get exactly this picture f of x x and g of x So what have we gained here? Well, we've written G as a composition of two maps. Uh, so if we can prove these two maps are continuous, then we get that G is continuous. And the first one is continuous because F is continuous. And we're using the product topology on the disk times the disk. So it's not too hard to prove this is continuous. And the second one well, the second one makes no reference to f, right? This is just a map. We should be able to write this down in coordinates and check that it's continuous. So let's just do that, right? If I give you a point y and a point x, the parametric equation of this line is, uh, it starts at y at time zero. It moves in the x direction relative to y so it's speed or velocity vector is x minus y and at time one you get to x minus y plus y so at t equals zero we start at y at t equals one we get to x and then at t equals something else we get to the boundary so what do we do with this line well we want to figure out whereabouts it hits the boundary in other words, we want to figure out whereabouts this point hits the unit circle. So we need to take its norm squared and set that equal to 1. Solve this for t. And that will tell us what time our line will hit the boundary. Then once we've got t, we can substitute back in and figure out what point we get to. So let, let's say this is at, um, so let's say the solution is 
cool solution. T of x and y, because it's going to depend on x and y, then by definition h of x and y is y plus x minus y multiplied by this number that depends on x and y. And these guys all depend continuously on y, and the only thing we need to check is that this time depends continuously on x and y. Okay, but this is this is a quadratic equation. If we just multiply this out by doing this dot product of these vectors, remember these x and y's are vectors, they're not coordinates. So if we multiply out the dot products here, we get y dot y plus x minus y dot x minus y times t squared plus 2ty dot x minus y equals 1. And that's a quadratic equation in t. All these guys are now just numbers, and we get that t is, well, what's the formula for solving quadratic equations? It's like minus the coefficient of t. plus or minus uh, the square root of, um, well, b squared, that's this again, 4y dot x minus y all squared, minus 4ac, there's no coefficient, oh there is a coefficient a, it's this uh, x minus y squared, and then there's a constant, I've got to subtract this one off and get it over here, so that's uh, norm y squared minus one. Yeah. This is a mess, but it doesn't matter. And we have to divide by x minus y squared, uh, and the factor of two, I think. So there's some simplification that can be done, like most of these twos go away in the fours. Uh, this just comes, if you totally confuse in looking at this, this just comes from this formula for solving quadratic equations that we've seen before. Applied to this quadratic equation here. Okay, so looking at this, you might think, oh, discontinuous, we've got plus or minus, it could be either. Well, no, it always has to be plus because if it was minus, we'd be moving off in this direction and hitting the boundary at the other side, but we always go from y to x to the boundary. So this is always going to be plus for the case we're interested in. And you might think, oh, it could be discontinuous because x could be equal to y and we can get infinity in the denominator. Well, we couldn't because we've cut out the diagonal so x and y are never equal to each other. So this is never zero so we never get an infinite denominator so this function is a continuous function of x and y of x is x and y because it's just written in terms of dot products square roots and stuff like that so okay that means this t which depends on x and y it depends continuously on x and y that means this h of x and y is also continuous in x and y and going back because this j was also a continuous function, the composition h compose j is continuous, and that tells us our function g is continuous. Okay, so that proves Brouwer's fixed point theorem. Very nice application of the fundamental group. It reduces non trivial statement about continuous maps to a trivial statement that the identity map of the integers does not factor through the zero map.